Hi, Sean. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Yeah, we're doing this interview. It's 11 o'clock my time. And yeah. are you also in the Eastern time zone or are you no, in British Columbia? I'm, in Brit I'm currently in British Columbia and it's uh, 8, 8 a.m. So early. A early. <laughs> yeah, a little early. But I think like I was saying earlier, like this pandemic, I think all of our routines have changed. And for me, for whatever reason, I've been waking up a lot earlier than, than I usually do. And I've been going to bed a lot earlier, too. I wish I could be a morning person, but I'm very much not. I, I was up last night until 1230 reading a book. Have, oh, you, wow. have you ever had a book just like you can't put it down and you end up staying up all night reading it? I've you know what? I'm, I'm very auditory learning wise. and I actually download audiobooks. So I, I would I can say I've, I've listened to audiobooks in bed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I can, I can um, relate in some, some respects. <laughs> yeah. What are you reading? I was reading American Dirt for my library book club. Oh. And it's about a woman and her son trying to escape from Mexico after cartel oh, wow. killed 14 members of her family. And oh, yeah. my goodness. At the end, you're just kind of like, okay, I cannot stop. I need to know that they make it okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's, I've been binging uh, Queen of the South. Have you heard, seen yep. that? What's that about? It's about a about a female, uh, well, it's about a female cartel, but it's like how she got lured into it. Um, yeah. It's pretty dark, but it's uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's like a very empowering. Like she's a very empowering character, and and she's actually trying to save people. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, it's an interesting interesting twit uh, plot twist. Do you do you find that you've been listening to more books since you haven't been able to be on the road? yeah books and podcasts um and uh and netflix <laughs> um yeah it's it's weird you know i i really miss being on the road not just for performing but just the the routine uh mm -hmm. you know a lot of times you know this last year's been super super challenging and and just kind of you know when you're on stage i don't know, i become like this other person and this persona and it's such like a an adrenaline rush and um I really miss it and I really it really it's been challenging for not just myself but a lot of us in, in, the, in the industry so yeah I'm finding other other ways to stay occupied obviously songwriting is, is one of them and being in my studio more which is great uh, a lot of zoom sessions I've been working with writers from all over the world which has been a lot of fun but yeah different day-to-day -day routines and just trying to like stay occupied and stay balanced and uh, healthy <laughs> yeah and before this, would you actually travel to go work with writers or was it also on Zoom back in the yeah, day? No, but yeah, back in the day, uh, I would travel. Yeah, actually, right before the pandemic, I was in Sweden uh, in, a, in a writing camp. Uh, and I think it was March 11th. It was like my last show last year. And then the it, it just went from like two weeks before people were kind of talking about it to like, we're banning, we're closing the country and banning flights. And I, I got back to Toronto to finish Take Me Home, my single, uh, finish recording it. And then um, at that time, I was still living in Los Angeles as well. I was going back and forth, but the border closed. And so I was stuck on this side and uh, couldn't get across. And I had other things down down south. So that was that was a lot. That was challenging. But um, yeah, it's weird. It's weird not being able to, to travel right now and write. But thankfully, Zoom is, is providing a bit of a platform for, for the songwriters and producers out there to, to at least stay occupied. And it's actually been a lot of fun. Yeah. Is Toronto your home base, LA or in British Columbia? <laughs> well, BC is my home base. I was born and raised in a little town called South Slocan, uh, just like eight hours east of Vancouver uh by 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 car and then uh six years ago i moved down to la uh and so i kept two places to go back and forth but last fall i moved back up here uh just because of the pandemic it was i just realized there's no point i could be anywhere with an internet connection mm -hmm. uh i might as well you know save money while i can while we're not touring um yeah so yeah i'm back i'm back in vancouver based based here for now what's your favorite thing about british columbia vancouver Oh, like this week has been amazing. I have like French doors right here in my little little studio, and uh, the weather and the air and the mountains. I think I think I'm, I think it's the mountains. There's some I'm a nature. I love I love the outdoors, and uh, it's pretty beautiful and pristine when the weather's nice like it is now. And I I just love walking outside and taking a deep breath. Yeah, I think you guys are maybe about a month ahead in seasons to us. Like this morning, <laughs> we had snow this morning, so that was no, fun. you didn't. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no.
Well, like, I like the snow too, though. But like, I like snowmobiling and um, yeah, not the kind of snow where you gotta like wake up and it's bitter cold and you gotta go to your car and then go to work. And, yeah, oh, we're, almost, we're almost at spring here. We have some flowers coming up, which is nice. Good, good, good. How's everything else in Barrie right now? What's what's the vibe with the? Uh, are you guys kind of locked down or, or how's yeah, yeah, Ontario is at a, a stay at home order. So oh. only essential work, which I wow. guess the viewing you is essential. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, I think a lot of people are just feeling worn out and tired and, and yeah. really done. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the one thing it's, it's, it's uh, like the pandemic pandemic fatigue. I think a lot of us are experiencing that too. And just, dealing with that and how to deal with that and how do you deal with not seeing your friends and be social if you're a social person and um, yeah it's pretty challenging. Do you uh, have family where you are? I don't my family's back uh, back home and in, in just outside of Nelson in South Slocan so we shot the music video for Take Me Home um, about eight hours away so yeah they they have yet to come out when I moved I moved up here last fall and they have yet to to come out and visit but they're dying to come check it out so. And when did you shoot the video was that this past summer? uh last last end of last september it was october october 1st no no it was end of october okay. around halloween yeah it was it actually snowed the night before and i was like are we gonna make like a winter video <laughs> but yeah. thankfully and the roads closed I, I i was driving from vancouver to nelson and uh i got to this little town called asuyas and and the drive back home is like through the mountains there's lots of mountain passes and um they closed the roads and i was like I'm going to shoot this video, but thankfully um, I doubled back. I went around through this other town called Kelowna. It took me 13 hours to get home. I got home next morning. I was in a kayak at 7 a.m. on a lake and it was beautiful. It was sunny and there was like snow in the mountains. It was like this perfect magical backdrop. And I was like, okay, this is great. Thank God. <laughs> and what a place to grow up in having that kind of backyard. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like Nelson's like a really cool small town. Uh, but it's like it's like the the city itself is on a on a lake, but there's like mountains on both sides, of, uh, and it's kind of in a valley, and it's just it is beautiful. I think I was spoiled growing up there. You don't really know until you leave like how nice it is. So I hope I can get back there sooner than later because I, I really I really miss it and uh, look forward to going there and hopefully relax and visit family and whatnot. But we'll see. Yeah, when you can travel again beyond exactly. on going back home though, where where do you want to go? Where's the first place that you want to go? Whether or not your, your touring schedule allows it, where would you love to go again? That's a great question. Um, well, I think besides home, <laughs> besides home to visit, um, uh, I'd love to go back to New York City. I love Manhattan. I love, I love the city, but uh, I won't be <laughs> rushing back there anytime soon. Um, but yeah, I don't know why, but, but I just, I like it there. <laughs> interesting to me that you love New York City, but you grew up in a place that is so open and not claustrophobic, which I find New York City. I've only been once, but I just, I have no desire to ever go there again. I guess, I mean, that came to mind because like, I miss the energy of, of that city. Like, I, I think it's kind of a two part, not two part question, but like my thought of, of that is, of New York City is like, I miss the energy of the hustle and the bustle and the people on the streets. I don't think we're ever, I don't know if we're going to go back to that. And I think for some ways it's going to be good, but some ways it's, it's, I'm, I'm going to miss that, you know, like what are concerts going to look like in the future? Like what are these public gatherings going to look like in the future? And I think it's going to take a, a while before we're back to any sort of pre pandemic uh, socialization. Um, I guess maybe that's kind of a bit of my New York vibe. Cause I don't, I don't know how close we're going to be to that. I, I, I like being, I, I like being around people. I like, um, I love the city. I love the energy there. And I love like the restaurants and the shopping and, and I don't know. I, I like New York. <laughs> you as a performer, I mean, that must, I, I've always wanted to ask someone this. So I'll ask you, what does it feel like inside your body when you get up on stage and you sing and you perform? It's, uh, it's euphoric. It's, um, I don't know what it is, but I, I, I just, it feels like I become someone else. It feels like once I'm on stage and like it's showtime, it's just like I, I leave my brain and like in a good way, like I leave my thoughts, you know, we all have these internal this internal dialogue and I, I'm a Virgo. So I'm always like in my head thinking about like everything and overanalyzing things and being super critical and trying to figure out the world's problems. And when I'm on stage, all that goes away. I close my eyes and play music and it's like 
it's a complete expression of emotions and you just chant i feel like i just ch channel that and then when you have fans that are reacting and feeding off of that it's just it enhances the whole entire experience and i feel like fans are such a big part to every show and there's been shows where i've literally felt like oh my god i'm kind of the audience is like hanging off of every word and that energy is just so powerful um and i think you know growing up when i was just starting playing in like coffee shops i still had that energy i still had that feeling and 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 you know there's just something so powerful about that and that's something I, you can't create on a zoom call or a live zoom yeah. you know it's, it's, i've always sung in choirs my whole life and i think you just illuminated what's happening i've never thought of it that way but i'm also like constantly there's constantly a dialogue in my head and it's very noisy and i've just realized that that's one of the things when I'm singing in a choir, it's gone. You just yeah. illuminated my life a little bit. Thank you. <laughs> well, I <don't> appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, music's just, uh, it's like a universal language. It really is. And, and it's something that taps into a different, it's not like a, it's not logical. It's not, you can't, um, you can't put it into words. It, it's what music, it's what feelings sound like. Yeah. If that's, yeah, it's a quote. I stole that from Zappa. Okay. <laughs> Frank Zapp. <laughs> did, how did music start in your life? Uh, early experiences, I always just saw my grand, grandfather singing at birthday parties, Christmas gatherings, or uh, we used to go camping and he would just sing around the campfire. And my, my family would just sing around the campfire on Fridays and Saturdays and the weekends. And I was just a kid witnessing that. And then uh, my parents put me in piano lessons when I was about four years old. I, I, I have an older sister. so. They put us in at the same time more as like a babysitter thing <laughs> but uh <laughs> oh i really enjoyed it and i really took a liking to it and thankfully stuck with it but that was kind of my early early uh you know introduction piano at four that's yeah well i mean it was more like it was like yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it wasn't like <laughs> breaking any going i wasn't going viral <laughs> no you might if you had been now you know with youtube yeah maybe yeah maybe you never know you never know <laughs> he's so cute playing the piano <laughs> yeah i have two children and i've been meaning to get them into piano and we have a really nice electric piano but it's old and okay we'll see has broken oh and no that has broken and this and i'm like well with the c's gone how am i supposed to teach them how to play piano so. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Middle C is like that's where you that's where you base the whole thing. <laughs> you figure out I should get them in before it's too late because apparently there's a point where your brain's just like, yeah, I'm done with trying to learn that. Yeah, I definitely, I, I, it's real. I definitely hit that wall too. Is uh, when I was 12, I was kind of like, I it was like, I don't want to do piano lessons anymore because at that point I was like having to learn like one piece of music for like three months, and I, as a kid to be strapped down for three months to do anything like that's 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 hard I was like I had soccer practice hockey practice and like I want to go play with my friends but um it's challenging so yeah get sir, sooner the better sooner the better because then you could you know you can guilt trip them a little bit you can use that <laughs> you have uh, your new EP take me home and we are playing take me home on cool FM it is yes a lovely song it is so lovely Thank you. and Thank you. You did finish it though before all this pandemic stuff happened and right yeah. before like right before i'm thankful it cost me a relationship but thankfully i finished my song <laughs> yeah but it was all good it was for the better it's for the better trust me yeah. you're the second person i've interviewed where they're like their big hit was the end of a relationship <laughs> yeah well this was a more like a pandemic kind of circumstance but it was it just kind of put a magnifying glass on what was inevitable yeah. but thankfully um I was able to finish the song before I got into lockdown yeah. uh, because I, you know, it's my livelihood. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm thankful that you guys are playing it and um, I'm, I'm just excited and thankful to have, to have music out right now. It's, it's really challenging. Right now. And so what are you doing to fill? I mean, normally you would be on the road performing. Yeah. Songs. The beginning of the pa pandemic last year, I was doing uh, Instagram lives every week, like every, every Thursday, I did it for about 10 weeks. Um, but uh, it became like, it became everything like, because I do the show on Thursday, and then I would bring on guests um, as well. So then I, throughout the week, I would bring in guests, and then I'd rehearse. And it was like, um, I'm a very regimented person. And like, my brain only really can do 
one or two things like at a high capacity. So I was completely committed to just the performance and, but I wasn't really seeing anything. It was more for fun. There was no, there's no money involved. There's nothing. And, and, I, and I, I got back into songwriting to work on my next, my next record. So um, I'm going to do more shows in the future, like live shows. It's just, it's, um, it's challenging. Instagram's a challenging one uh, to, to do a consistent show. And it's not just even the consistency. It's more about like the technical aspects of it. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> to, get, to answer your question, I've been I've just been writing a lot more and producing and, and working on the next the next record. Yeah. Do you have a timeline when you think the next full record might be out? I'm not sure. It's a little up in the air right now. We're figuring it out because, you know, Take Me Home is still doing well. And I just put out um, well, it seems like I just put it up. But I put up EP at the end of last year. So, uh, yeah, hopefully maybe by the end of summer or summer, we'll have another single. Uh, but we'll see. That's kind of we're discussing all that right now. Yeah. Well, just before we go, I wanted to know what is bringing you joy right now that's outside of music. I love like I said earlier, I love being outside um, and just taking just taking some fresh air and going for a walk and, and, and just trying to get out of the, the thoughts and the negative thoughts of like, oh my God, we're trapped. Like, when's this going to be over? Because I think it's been really consuming for, for a lot of people. Um, and so that it brings me joy literally just to get outside and go for a walk and just enjoy the nature. <laughs> it's a simple answer, but it's, it's true. Yeah, I think that's true for a lot of us. And sometimes we forget how powerful just being outside can be. Yeah, and, and honestly disconnecting, like just kind of there's our devices and like you know it's so easy to be um available and so it's just nice to get out and disconnect for a minute well it's been great to talk to you thanks so much for yeah. taking the time and for being up so early oh it's all good it's not even that it's that's all good eight o'clock so it's, it's good <laughs>